Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome back to Dyson Sphere Program. This is the 22nd episode of our Super Proliferation run. And we are getting close to finishing our pretty awesome project where we are trying to build 30 rockets per second. Well, that should make for a lot of Dyson Spheres. Now, in order to do that, we are going to take the smart approach and we are trying to kind of split up our build in two pieces this time around. Um, well, maybe maybe a bit more, but at least two basic pieces. Because what we are going to need is a lot of Dyson Sphere components. To be exact, we are going to need 48 per second. Now, as you can see, the Dyson Sphere component is pretty straightforward to make, honestly, compared to other, everything else that we've been doing. Um, that turned out to be pretty straightforward because we divided it in separate parts but to be honest this one is probably the most straightforward component of all the rocket components that we have to make now one little twist we are going to split up the build in two separate pieces why because we also are um, going to be producing solar sills in order to make these components but the solar sills themselves also of course go into our dyson sphere we haven't actually made any solar sill build yet so far, uh, despite the fact that we can pretty much say we're in the end game now. Um, but yeah, we haven't really had any use for our solar sills, so we haven't made a build for that yet. So we are going to make a build for that first. It's going to be a build that will produce 30 solar sills per second. And that's for two reasons. One, it's a full build, so it's a nice number. And two, it's actually a very nice number as well, considering what we're going to need for our Dyson Sphere components. So let's jump to that. But before we dive into that, I actually completely forgot to mention that we are now on the planet called Homam 2, which is an interesting name. Um, but of course, we are going to have to rename that. So this planet is now going to be known as the Skyless System. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but you'll have to do um so yeah once more we are calling this system after someone who has been commenting quite often on my videos helping out with blueprint mistakes and things like that so there you go we now have the skyless system so our planet will now be called skyless 2 so there we go um what were we building right solar sills so we are going to need quite a lot of items actually in order to make those solar sills um it seems like a pretty straightforward recipe and yeah, well, as most of the recipes are, it's not the most complicated thing to build. I'm actually almost out of uh, ILSs in my inventory. That's interesting. So let's start out with the classic ILS. As always, we are going to have to build some solar sills. We are going to leave ourselves some room for proliferation. I think by now I know how much space we need. Um, and we are actually going to need a lot of these we are going to need 32 assemblers making solar sills and as you can see we are going to need some graphene as well as some photons so that's not going to be a huge problem considering half of those materials are going to come straight from the ILS because that's how we roll um once again I always mess up this distance here there we go um, this is 30 in total. We need 32, so let's add two more in the back. There we go. It seems the FPS issues haven't followed me around from the previous planet, so that's good. We didn't really have issues back there, but well. It wasn't the most pleasant sight either when I had the uh, warning, hey, your FPS is dropping because you are building too much stuff in your universe. Um, we are, I always forget where the solar sills are. The components in the rockets are here. Oh, there you are. There you are, there you are. And we're also going to need graphene over here. And like I said, we can simply import the graphene because we are treating that as a rare resource. All the way through. And we are going to have to produce the photons. Yes, auto safe. That took a little longer than usual, but that's okay. Let's have the output belt go in on the other side. And then we're going to have to put in an output belt on the other side as well here. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Pretty nice and organized, I would say. Okay, now we are going to put in some spray coders. And yes, we are going to spray the graphene just in case. And I will 
turn off the blinking lights because some of you have notified me that that's really annoying so if anything I can listen at least and then we are going to have to build the photons now the photons are how many are we, of those are we going to need we're going to need uh, 20 of those and we obviously do not want to place them like that that's not gonna work I think this should be okay uh, 20 so we need nine over here and then one more that should make ten and let's see let's see let's see photon combiners there is a rare recipe for photon combiners as well it uses once again the same rare materials that's also used for the Casimir crystal and it's also actually used for the advanced miners I don't really advise you to use it for this recipe. I think there's much better uses for this this specific rare resource than using them for the photon combiner. So we'll just do it had do this the old fashioned way. Well, I started speaking Dutch there. Which is something that you tend to do sometimes when you're Dutch, but not that helpful if you guys aren't actually Dutch speaking. Some of you are. Some of you are. I've yes, I've seen you. I've seen you in the comments. Some of you speak Dutch, and that's awesome. But if you don't speak Dutch, I spent half my day at work speaking English anyway, so I don't mind doing some more in the evenings. Now, let's see. We are going to have to have some output belts. And yeah, there's a couple of ways in which we can do this. Let's just do it like this. Pretty straightforward. Because if we do it like this, then we can just simply place the spray coder over here. Might have left a little bit more room in this specific corner than we strictly need, though. Let's make it a bit more compact. Actually, I mean, we could actually move it in even closer. I don't think that's ne necessary, because I do like leaving a little bit of space just to make sure there's no conflicts in terms of the uh, clipping or anything like that, but yeah. Okay, so in order to make photons, we are going to need prisms and we're going to need circuit boards. And that's where things actually get interesting. Although not that much more interesting, to be honest, but okay. Um, we are going to need some prisms. And how much space do we have left? Mm, not that much, actually. Depends a little bit on how we build it. So what we could actually, mm, yeah, I was thinking what we could actually do is 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 something that I actually do not want to do. Um, let's do it like this. We can build it over here. Um, yeah, that's not gonna work if I do it from this side. At least not if I want to just drag and drop. There we go. These are going to be the prisms. There we go. And then we have another row. And then we're going to need one more. Because we actually need 11 of them. So these are 10. Um, but now we do have to be a little bit careful about what we put on which belt. So this is going to be the prism belt, I think. Almost sounds like prison belt. And that sounds very nasty. Do I like this? This 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 is kind of in the way. Which we can solve by putting it on this side. I'm just not sure I like that any better either. Mm. Um, I think we can make it work though. Okay, so this is the prison belt. Actually like this and then we are going to have to put in a glass belt somewhere let's just do it like that um, because we can actually just make the glass just below and this should work because remember this only has one input so even though we have two belts in the middle and two assemblers on each side we can grab it from one transport it to the other and I think we should be fine we want to do the math we can, uh, well, math in this case simply being this, so this is the incoming belt, this is the outgoing belt, and this is the incoming belt, and this is the outgoing belt. Yeah, that works just fine. Okay, so prisms sorted. Um, what else do we need? We need circuit boards over here, which we can 
quite simply make over here maybe um, something like this. Use those three and the reason I'm putting them over here is now we can do this. And flip it around. Take a spray coder and I think we should be able to fit it in there. There we go. Spray coder all done already and the circuit boards well not all done and ready. But we're getting quite far into this little tiny um, solar cell build. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit and then join me for part two. Okie dokie. So now we continue on with the iron that we are going to need to make the circuit boards. And we are going to need seven of those. And then we are going to need only four. Let's see, how can we do that best? Something like this. Oh, that fits so nicely. Okay, so... Um, did I count correctly there? I think I did. So this is going to be the copper. And we are going to need four of those. And then this is going to be the iron. And we're going to need seven of those. Yes, I in fact counted correctly. Counting not my strongest skill, but this is going to be copper. This is going to be iron. And so let's see, we are going to need an ILS somewhere. Um, let's assume it's going to, be, now, uh, we'll place it in a moment, but what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to bring in the, we could actually maybe place it over here. So we are going to need to bring in the iron ore, probably something like this. And then this is going to be the copper ore. And I will have to mark that up because I am going to forget which is which. And we do need to make sure that we have these items coming in. Um, and then we are going to need quite a lot of um, glass production. That's what's the word I was looking for. Glass, 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 glass. So how many of these things? Well, actually, let's place the ILS before we do anything else because we do need to make sure it actually fits. And it does fit quite nicely, so that's not going to be a problem. Um, but of course, we also need to proliferate this stuff. So we actually need to move this one a little bit out. And I was kind of afraid of that because now we don't have that much room left over here for a glass smelting. And we do need quite a lot of glass smelters, honestly. Um, well, on the other hand, I also don't really see an option to make this build more square, so to say. Unless we move these smelters to this side, but that won't really solve anything now, would it? No, I don't think so. Anyway, let's just see how many smelters we actually need. Well, I know how much we need, but we need to see how it will turn out. So we are going to need 38 smelters. So if we put it like this, and then we put in two incoming belts in between, and let's say for the moment they're coming from this direction. Actually, no. Let's say they're... Mm. Well, well, there's, there's a few options we have here, actually. So what we could do is we could just go with the standard build with one belt in between so this is 30 30 30 30 uh 36 38 right no okay now i lost count so we have 30 so we need to add eight more and this is eight yes no never mind that was correct counting you it's so difficult so if we do it something like this and then oh okay like this all the way up here it's a little sad we need to have the spray coder not aligned with everything else i mean we could of course move the entire build but that might be a little bit ridiculous um hmm hmm I really like the top half of the build. I'm just not entirely sure about the bottom half. It feels like we're leaving a lot of open space here. Well, we are leaving a lot of open space there. Um, what we could actually do is let, let's remove this one. 
And then let's take, for example, to this part. We could put that something over here. Maybe like this. So now we basically took care of all of this. And then we could actually add in the last two as well. And then we can remove this. And we need to put in the other half. There we go. Um, so let me double check. So we have 9, 18, 36, 38. Yes, so that's still correct. Then we can do this and we can do this. It's a little bit more compact. Uh, we could actually make it even more compact if we around with this belt a little bit because it's mainly this belt getting in the way but it doesn't necessarily need to be exactly over there so if we do it like this we can actually move the entire thing and consider it moved so now is it as compact as it's going to get i actually placed in a few splitters over here so we can make sure we supply all of this with some stone and now I think we have pretty much the perfect position to place a ILS over here in the corner. And yeah, I think this is going to work out very nicely. Maybe, maybe move it a little bit. Mm, depending on where we actually want to do the proliferating. Mm -mm -mm. How about this? We take the stone, well, step one, put in stone, and we do that something like this. And then I want a second belt of stone. Can we fit a spray coder on here? Yes, we can. Well, not on top of there. Let's not do that. <laughs> Um, and then we are going to need two more things. We are going to need the copper as well as the iron. And what we can do is we can simply do that like this. Um, we are going to want to have copper and iron over here. And then we are going to put those like this. I have to think there for a moment because we do need to get this right. Um, and then we have the iron over here. And we might as well take the space we have and do that like that. Um, yes, and we do of course need to make sure we proliferate that. But that's not going to be a problem if we do it like this. Because we can simply... Let's not stack... Really? I was about to say, let's not stack them. And I stack them right away. There we go. So now we have the iron, the copper, the glass, and pretty much everything else up and running. It just needs some power and stuff. Okay, there we go. The build is complete. I added in the last few belts, the proliferation belts, actually a few missing spray coders as well. So it should now all be up and running and working. And while I was at it, I actually built the build four more times. So now we have a total of five times 30 is 150 solar seals per second. Now you might be wondering, isn't that too much? Uh, yes, it is. We actually only need about 120 per second. Well, only being a relative to her now, but only 120 per second for our rockets. So the other 30 per second is actually just meant to go right up in the air into our Dyson Sphere. Because, of course, we also need solar seals to actually fill up our Dyson Sphere. Now, that's not going to be a problem necessarily, but I just wanted to have one more build just to make sure that we had enough solar seals floating around. And... Honestly, um, I tried to kind of make the foundation look like a solar sail. So squint really, really hard. And just have me, let me have this one. Let's all pretend and confirm this is actually a solar sail. Looks nothing like one. But anyway, um, yeah. So solar sails. 
Um, not the most complicated or large build compared to some of the things we've done in previous episodes, but I am actually going to stop this episode here and split the other half of the episode to the next episode, other half of the build to the next episode, sorry about that, um, because the second half of this build, well, I'm saying half, but it's more like the other 80% of this build for the um, Dyson Sphere components, it's going to take a lot of time, so I don't want to have this become a uh, one and a half hour or two hour episode. So um, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so. And yeah, let's get ready to make, I think, by far the largest build that we've done in this series so far. It might actually be the largest build that we will ever do in this series. Um, so make sure you don't miss it. And I hope to see you in the next one.